Hi everyone, um, so today I thought I'd tackle periodicity. I don't know how this is going to go, I'm just doing it off the cuff and we'll see how we get on because chemistry is actually quite tricky to explain but I wanted to talk to you about the fundamentals and really getting to understand this bad boy, the periodic table because I know a lot of people get a bit lost and confused about what it's trying to tell you but if you really get that then chemistry really does just start falling into place. So let's start by considering an atom. You probably know that there are three components of an atom and we call these subatomic particles. And the three we're interested in is number one, electrons, number two, protons, and number three, neutrons. So what we first need to understand is the charge on each. So a neutron, like its name sounds, is neutral. There is no charge. A proton Beginning with P, I'll help you remember, it's positively charged, and that's a positive one charge. And then an electron is the opposite of a proton, and that it's negatively charged by negative one. Okay? Right, we know that all atoms are neutral, and so automatically we know, automatically we know that the number of electrons in an atom has to match the number of protons, so that the positive and negative charges um, counteract each other and balance. So, um, when we look at our periodic table, there's a little key, one like this, and we can see that we have a relative atomic mass number and an atomic number, and we can use that to work out lots and lots of things from the periodic table. So first of all, based on what I was just saying, the atomic number is, and this is your key definition, the number of protons within an atom. And that's what you'd write in the exam, but it's worth bearing in mind that it's also the same as the number of electrons. So we've discussed charge to do with some atomic particles, and now we need to understand the mass. Right, so you need to know that a proton has a mass of 1, and a neutron has a mass of 1. However, electrons have a very, very tiny mass, and you might see that written as 0, you might see it as 1 divided by 1840, or you might read the word negligible, but these all mean the same thing. It means that an electron has a mass of effectively zero. And therefore, when we consider the atomic mass number, as seen in the periodic table, which particles are responsible? It's obviously going to be the neutrons and the protons. So when you're working out the atomic mass, you just need to add together the neutrons and the protons. So for example, fluorine has an atomic number of nine. That tells me that it has 9 protons, however it has a mass number of 19 based on the periodic table. That tells us that the number of neutrons is 10, because 19 take 9 is 10. Um, have a go at potassium and see what you get. Okay then, so potassium, we know that it has an atomic number of 19, so therefore there are 19 protons. Then we look at its mass number, which is 39, and therefore we know that 19 of those 39s comes from protons, and therefore the number of neutrons has to be 20. How did you get on with that? Okay, now let's talk about the arrangement of these particles within the atom. We find that the mass of an atom is found in its nucleus, which automatically tells us that the protons and neutrons are found inside the nucleus. The electrons exist in what we call shells, and they're concentric circles which surround the nucleus. And spread out. So we find our electrons there. There's just a couple of things you need to know about electron placement. First of all, that the first shell, so that's the first circle, can only have two electrons in it. So they'll go one at the top, one at the bottom. Now chemistry is really fussy about um, drawing conventions and naming conventions. So the first shell has two electrons, but every other shell after that can contain a maximum of eight. Um, so for example, Looking at sodium, we know that the electron number, because it's the same, remember, as the atomic number, is 11. So you'll fill up your shell 2, 8, 1. And now looking at that, how many electrons are there in the outer shell? Well, that's 1. So sodium is in group 1 because the group number, this is important, in the periodic table tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell. Let's look at potassium. You'll see a similar thing. It has 19, though, electrons. So you'll fill 2, 8, 8, and then 1. So what can we see in common with sodium? We see that there's one electron in the outer shell, and that tells us that sodium and potassium are both in group 1, and you'll see that any element, therefore, in group 1, and remember that's the vertical column in the periodic table, they'll all have one electron in the outer shell. 
So remember, what does the group number tell you? It tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell. Let's use group 7 as an example. So group 7, I would therefore predict, would have 7 electrons in its outer shell. And if we look at chl chlorine, for example, 17 electrons fills up 2, 8, 7. And yes, we're agreed, it has 7 electrons in its outer shell. And now, really, the only last thing I want to talk to you about is periods. And remember the period, so this is the group, but remember the period goes across, it's the horizontal row, and we can find out a lot from that as well. So I'm going to pick, for example, nitrogen, and that has an atomic number of 7, so its electron number is 7, and therefore we'll fill up our shells to 5. So how many shells of electrons do I have? The answer is 2 because there's two electrons in the first shell and five in the next shell. So we have seven electrons altogether, but only two shells of electrons, and that tells us we're in period two. So our key definition here is that a period is a horizontal row which shows the number of shells of electrons. So can you have a go for me at um, magnesium? Can you tell me what group it's in and also which period it's in. So magnesium's in group 2 and it's in period 3 and we can work that out because if you arrange it into electron shells you can see that it would go 2, 8, 2 so that's 3 shells of electrons, period 3 and there's 2 electrons in the outer shell so that's group 2. Um, I know that that was a lot of information to absorb um, so if some of it was unclear, can you just let me know how I could improve? Any comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye!